Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Kimball. I'm the Assistant Department Head for the Department of Mathematics at the University of Louisiana Lafayette. I've been at the university for about 12 years now and the math department teaches all the math and the statistics courses on campus. I wanted to take just a few minutes to talk to you about uh, mastering mathematics in your first year. So number one, uh, let's get through this together. Uh, all of the faculty are, are preparing just like you are. Um, and I don't wanna go through all of the, the presentations that I know you've, you've seen over the past uh, week or so, or the past few days. But I do want to talk specifically about uh, how that's going to work in your math and stat courses. So number one, communicate, communicate, communicate with your instructor. Uh, a, a lot of our courses are going to be uh, high flex or a combination of on campus and uh, remote learning. Um, we believe that that was kind of the best uh, option because uh, there's a lot of unknowns that are going to happen now or now in the, the rest of the semester. And we felt that having the course at least prepared to be fully remote was uh, a good preparation for everyone, including the instructor. So if we can get to the point to where we can have face-to-face -face meetings on a regular basis, or we can start from the beginning and continue that through the rest of the term, then great. But the content's gonna be there online. And so we're pre prepared to go maybe less face-to-face -face and more remote or uh, I'm hoping not, but if it happens that we have to go fully remote, then we're prepared for that. And so we start that process from the very beginning. But those courses now, because they're taught by different instructors, uh, they have some, some guidance, but they also have a, a, some freedom to structure their course the way they want to. So some of them are gonna meet with you uh, live stream during class time. Some of them are gonna have pre-recorded lectures and some of them are gonna, uh, meet with you uh, just during class time uh, and answer questions, but the content is gonna be delivered uh, through pre-recorded uh, uh, videos. So go to Moodle and read the entire course syllabus for each one of your courses and communicate with your instructor, find out what their expectation is. Um, you're gonna have multiple instructors and all of them are gonna have different expectations for their course. So make sure you have that lined out. Uh, for each one of your courses. Now, uh, make class time matter, and particularly for math and stat courses. What that means is if there's a live session, you log on every day just like you would go to class. Uh, if it's a pre recorded lecture, I would encourage you to watch that lecture during class time, just like you have a set schedule. Uh, it's going to be very easy and very tempting to have part time jobs or um, to, to do uh, other things during what I call your prime time, meaning the time that you're mentally awake and alert, uh, but then class time becomes secondary. You don't wanna do that, um, especially for this type of, of a setting. Uh, but I think more importantly for math and status to keep a notebook. This is not gonna be uh, where you go, you read uh, a particular passage or you read a chapter, uh, from say literature or history, and then you go to class and it's some presentation, but then there's a lot of discussion involved. Um, it is, uh, writing becomes a fundamental part of math and statistics. You have to be writing it, you have to be listening, you have to be doing it. And the only way to do that is to keep a notebook uh, and to follow along. And a lot of our instructors, right, if it's normal class time, they have built-in times where they say, okay, now we're gonna stop and you're gonna do something. Some of them do that in their, in their lectures, so you wanna be prepared for that. Mathematics is not a spectator sport. Uh, I know a lot of you have, have heard this sentiment before. Uh, it, <clears throat> if you have, I'll say it again. If you haven't, I think it's very apt for particularly math and statistics. Um, you don't practice until you, you get it right. You practice until you can't get it wrong. One of the things uh, students hear me say a lot when it comes to mathematics is you can't, um, you have to practice for what the, what the game is. Uh, if, you, if you pardon the sports analogy, right? Uh, if we were in a face-to-face -face setting, then it's you and a piece of paper and a pencil and maybe a calculator and that's it. Uh, 
And so that's what you need to be preparing for. Uh, if you prepare yourself for that by uh, doing, let's say you're doing your homework or you do a practice test, but then you're always going to uh, a textbook or uh, a resource or a website to get those solutions and then to get that right answer, that's what you're actually training yourself to do. You're training your brain to wait for that resource in order to complete the task. Uh, but and then when you get to the, to the game, when you get to the exam, your brain doesn't know what to do because you haven't trained it on what to do. So you've got to train it to uh, work through and think and figure out what has to be done on its own. Uh, and then the more you do it, it becomes easier every single time. And that takes practice. And so one of the things I'm going to tell you and, and my challenge to you is going to be to do that every single day. Uh, and that becomes important. So here are my challenges for you for the fall. I'll be honest, this is my challenge to everyone during any semester, but I'm going to emphasize it even more this term. So number one, work one problem every day without help. Um, if you can work two, great, but I want you to do one problem. So that means you open the book, you go to uh, the, the online homework, but you do a problem all by yourself, you understand it every day. Uh, try not to get into these uh, hour, two hour, three hour cram sessions. Um, you can get a lot accomplished potentially, but what happens is, is that it really becomes short term memory and it doesn't get retained. Uh, you do it a little bit every day, but you do it without help and it reinforces the material and you can recall it. And you'll watch if you do this, if you take this challenge and you do it, you will see every day it will become a little bit easier. It's baby steps, but by the end, it really makes a difference. One other thing that I think is helpful is explaining this stuff, not just doing it. Now, I'm not get, asking you to, to create a topic or a lecture or something like that. If you have a friend in the course, this works well. You ask your friend, say, okay, what's a problem? Don't do a topic, do a problem. What's a problem you didn't figure out? Or if you figured it out, but you didn't understand what was said, say, explain it to me. You explain that problem to your friend. It will help you and it will help your friend. And then you let your friend do the same thing. If you're in the same class, that's great. But I know you have a friend that is in a different math class. So y'all get on Zoom and y'all do this for each other. The other thing, number three, is to challenge yourself. You always want to beat that previous math test. Uh, even if it's a quiz, you want to up that quiz score every single time. You want to up that math grade, that, that test score every single time. Uh, it's easy. We see this at midterm, right? It's a midterm slump. Um, the first test, either goes really well or it goes okay. The net test two, test two either goes uh, okay or sometimes, a lot of times it goes not okay. And then by test three, um, <clears throat> either, either um, students don't get the help they need or they don't turn it around and then test three is a, a, a really, really not okay. I'll put it that way. So you have to consistently push yourself, right? Right? If, if, Right? Again, we'll go back to the sports analogies. If the football team wins game one, they don't practice less, okay? You practice more. So if you do well on the first one, great. Do better the next time, right? You want every exam to not be a challenge. You want it to be, I don't want to call it easy, but it should be a little more routine than you don't want to get on that test and say, I have no idea what I just read. Um, I guarantee our instructors do not do that. Uh, they may give you a question that you have not read before, but I guarantee you they've given you the tools. You know everything that is in that question. You know every, every term that's in that question, and you will have the tools to do it. You may have to put a few things together, but that goes back to my previous topic of you got to practice. Your, your brain, your mind has to be... Uh, has to be practiced in making those connections, right? Because the more you do it, the easier it becomes. Uh, one of the things I like to sell, um, uh, particularly, I, I love saying this in my Calc 2 courses, because that tends to be uh, a course. But even if it's not Calc 2, let's say it's Math 102, Math 103. <clears throat> I put a problem on the board. I put 2 plus 3, and I say it equals 5. And I ask the class, is that right? Everyone says yes. And I say, do you need to check it in the back of the book? And they look at me kind of funny and they say, no. I say, why? 
And he said, because I know it's right. And that right there, that statement that I know that it's right is where you need to be before you jump into a test. If you're not to that point, if you're doing problems and you're like, well, I, I hope I did it right. Well, I, I think that's the bet. I mean, you're, that uncertainty is what's gonna cause you to not do well. You gotta know, know enough to know what you know and what you don't know. So you need to really know that you've gotten the question right or you've gotten the question wrong. That's why students at a higher level, they know when they didn't do well on a test and they know when they did well because they know that sense of, <clears throat> I understood it and I did it right or I didn't understand it and I did it wrong. And so that's where you need to be before you jump into a test. And so lastly, you don't wait to get your help. I can't tell you the number of students that contact me at the end of the semester, midterm, the third test, and they say, okay, well, I was starting to struggle at, at week two. Um, I, I, I kind of, I got some tutoring. Uh, the test, test one was okay. Uh, test two was really terrible. And then, and now I've just failed test three again. And now I don't know if I'm going to be able to pass but I don't really understand the professor and what they talk about doesn't make sense or I'm not communicating with them or um, they just don't teach the way I, uh, I, that I learn or something along those lines. Well, those are the things that need to be addressed in week two or week one, not in week 11 or 12. Uh, so go to your professor, go to the instructor, talk to them. Don't wait until Right. You know, when you go into that first test and it doesn't go well, where you're going, where, what the road you're heading down. So don't get in that position. So you stop it before it ever starts. All right. That does it for me. I hope this was helpful. Um, if you have questions, uh, always give us, uh, well, I would say come by to Maxim Doucet, but that may not be an option. Uh, I will be there as much as possible. Uh, Call us on the phone. We do have an email address, math at louisiana.edu. It will make its way to the correct person. Um, best of luck this semester and welcome to UL.